Hi, Dr. Mohammed. Uh, I'd like to thank you for coming here and to actually get to talk to the Muslim Brotherhood just rather than to hear from them. And I'm a Christian Egyptian, so it's also important for me to learn more about you from face to face rather than no, just through the news. So the first question I have is about civil liberty. Now as a political party, or being a mem members of parliament, which soon probably you will be, uh, you have responsibility not only to protect Muslims, but also Christians and people of different faiths, but also of different cultures. There are some Egyptian tribes that won't even consider themselves Egyptians, Nubians as well, that have their own beliefs and faiths and Bedouins. And all of these, excluding the, including the expats, including uh, people visiting and tourism, tourists, have different... Um, Definite, not definitions of civil liberties, but they drink, they eat differently, and so forth. But that also means being able to trade with these goods and so forth. So alcohol and pork and so forth. So what is the Muslim Brotherhood's policy on this? Or what would you be considering? The other one is we heard and we've read elsewhere that the Muslim Brotherhood would have problems against a... Um, a, pres a, a woman president or a Christian president that's democratically elected. Um, do you have any issues with that? No. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Said Morsi, um, you've said on more than one occasion tonight that the sole uh, source of authority in New Egypt will be the people. Uh, but that doesn't sit very well, I don't think, with the idea of a religious party who takes its authority from God. Um, so I would like to know how your specifically Islamic identity will manifest itself in New Egypt if you are not going to change the constitution and if you are going to respect the will of the people. I just want to know in what practical terms will Islam make a difference more so in the future than it has done in the past? Yeah. I had a follow-up question as well about the relationship between the Muslim Brotherhood as a movement and the political project of the Muslim Brotherhood. Last week, uh, you came on, on TV with Yusri Fouda, and uh, the next day there was a response debate from some of the Muslim Brotherhood youth responding to some of the ideas that you proposed about this relationship. And um, Ibrahim al Hudaybi, I think, was describing the diversity internal to the Muslim Brotherhood as a movement in Egypt and use the term madrasa to refer to the Muslim Brotherhood, assuming, from what I understood, that it was a, a philosophical school that could give birth to different ideological projects which would need to be represented by different political parties. You responded that it was a school of thought, um, and it, it was implied that you equated that with an ideological school, and that any differences internally would be strategic differences, not ideological differences. Do you think that the Muslim Brotherhood as a movement in Egypt can be reduced to one ideology. We can just take a couple of more questions because I think this will be the last round. Uh, thank you very much uh, for coming. It's, it's actually a very unique event to hear from the Muslim Brotherhood. We only hear from one side from the media. I'm very delighted to come here tonight. I would like to hear uh, your comments about the future of uh, making your voices heard, particularly to the West. You, you, you mentioned earlier that you've always been prohibited for being heard, and surely no one in the West is very keen to hear from the Muslim Brotherhood. And I mean, we are lucky here you have Egyptian fellows that invited you. Uh, what is your policy in the party to communicate with the rest of the world outside Egypt? Yeah. Um, thank you for your talk. Uh, I have two questions. The first one, who uh, do you think will be your main political opposer? And second, I'm quite interested in the approach that uh, this new party will have on international policy, and especially what will the approach uh, toward the Palestinian and Israel problem. Yeah. 
as far as the protection of Christians as uh, protection of Muslims, this is not anyone's choice. This is a basic uh, principle that all citizens of Egypt living under the same constitution having equal rights and they all are part of the country. They are members, citizens in the general Egyptian society and they are living together. They are very close to each other. They are neighbors. What we have is really good relationships between Muslims and Christians, even uh, non-Muslims from uh, other religions. We have Jews in Egypt also and others. And uh, we don't have a problem in that. And we are ordered by Islam to, if, if a Muslim is responsible about the, the country, if he's a president, then he is ordered by Islam to protect uh, all citizens in the society, regardless of their belief or religion. And uh, if somebody doesn't do this, then he doesn't understand Islam. He is violating Islam. If this happened uh, in, in some places in the world, and I haven't seen it happening occasionally, but sometimes we see things, so this is, this is a big mistake. This is a big mistake. It shouldn't happen. So, as far as we are concerned, we're talking about Islam, we're talking about real understanding, moderate, unbiased Islam, which is Islam, uh, then we are talking about equal rights in, uh, between the Egyptian citizens, their right to uh, live in peace all together under the same umbrella, under the same constitution, under the same law, having uh, uh, all kinds of... Uh, positions in the, in, the, in the government and and so on and so forth uh, what we been what we been raised before about uh, uh, a woman or a Christians and as a president this is uh, our opinion this is not the constitution situation we declared our uh, the opinion based on Islamic Sharia which states clearly that, who in an Islamic country, Islamic country means the majority are from Muslims, then the president, only the president, uh, it's a mandatory according to Sharia. And there is a debate about this. And we have chosen other group this. We have raised this statement from uh, the party principles and the statements. So it's not there yet, but I was, I'm trying to explain to you the position of Islam in this. And that doesn't mean there is differentiation between the Egyptians based on their belief. It's only talking for many reasons about only the president, uh, whether uh, talking about a woman or a, a Christian. And uh, as far as a party will practice politics and go through, we're talking about our party, not about the constitution. We are not going to change the constitution. We do not have the right to change the constitution. People have the right, the people uh, have, uh, are uh, deciding and they, well, uh, agreed upon to have a constitution like this or a new constitution. We are not going to violate the constitution. We respect the constitution. Dr. Mohammed, you can't, you're not, oh sorry. Can we just, sure. just for the sake of time, if there's any further discussion, can we make it after the lecture? Because the question wasn't necessarily. Yeah, there's another sorry. part in the question, I'm, you said? Yes, because you might not be able to, you're not going to necessarily touch the Constitution, but the Constitution is incomplete. The question also was pertaining to laws. For example, with regards to alcohol, with regards to trading um, with pork and so forth, which is not necessarily an Islamic issue. It's morely to deal with people in general. Yeah. Uh, I remember when I was a member in the Parliament, and we have uh, a very... Uh, well distinguished uh, member, Lady Georgette, and she was Christian. And when they've been talking about uh, uh, alcohols and things like this, and somebody said, this we have to leave in the society because of our brothers and, and our citizens, the, the Christians. She'd been very angry and she said, 
Alcohol is also forbidden in Christianity, it's not in Islam. So we are not talking about now going in the street and find everyone carrying his own bottle and just drinking all the time. This is just, this is just an imaginary situation. If people are doing whatever they want inside their homes, this is in Islam, they are free to do whatever as far as they do not threaten the society. No one can knock the door on any person and say, hey, what you are doing inside your house? This is forbidden in Islam. So there is a, a big, big misunderstanding in this situation. Now, when we come to power, then we can talk about the law, but we are not in power. And even if we are in power, it's Egyptian people, well, Muslims and Christians. It's not our well. And we do not have this desire to make discrepancies in the society. When we talk about alcohol, we say it's forbidden in Islam. This is very clear. Yeah. Now, if we have some other religious or religion in, in the society, people are behaving according to the religion inside their homes and they will not threaten. If anyone Muslim or non-Muslim threatens the society, then he will be violating the law. What do you mean by threatening society? Because there are restaurants, there are bars, there are public places that actually serve alcohol that, in this way, that is currently in place. Yeah. There are also duty-free shops, sh shops that serve alcohol, and not only that, but pork or other goods that not necessarily are part of Islam. Are you going to leave them alone or actually... You talk about me or the Egyptian people? No, no, your opinion. <laughs> your opinion. Yeah. Your opinion. No, my, my, opi my opinion is not is it will not be against the Egyptian people well. My opinion remains my opinion. Even if I am controlling Egypt, even, even if I am the prime minister, I do not have the right to push the Egyptian people to choose their own constitution. They will agree upon or disagree through their constitution. Everyone has got to respect the people well. Now, if you want to talk about specific small things, we can find many things that we can talk about and in the whole world. Now, every society has its own culture, principles, religion, history, commons among the people. Now, if we want to take a very small thing and talk about specific your opinion, then in my religion, alcohol is forbidden. In my religion, to me, it's forbidden. And this is, this is my right to declare it and say it. Now, if I'm living in a civic society and the constitution or the law states whatever will be in it representing the people, then I myself have to respect it. I do not have the right to change the law by myself. But the people does. So we are sometimes trying to put an imaginary situation and then try to answer questions. You know, this is an iffy question, not this question, but in general. It's out of phase. It's not in the course. It's, it's, it's a question that will be answered in the future when we have such a case and the people respond to it through the Constitution, which will be reflected through the Parliament to a law. And everybody in the society, when I am here, I have to respect the law here in this place. I cannot, as a foreigner, I cannot violate the laws that are being here implemented. I, I do not have the choice to do that. But why? Because the law represents the people.